Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we go back to the middle of last winter as Chris Dalton heads out to complete his red hind cull. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Okay, we're, uh, I'm up at Kinaid with Graham and um, that is three days ago with a blackthorn, one blackthorn. I've never experienced pain like it in my life. A&E, intravenous flipping antibiotics uh, and I still can't really grip so I don't know, it's going to be quite interesting pulling the trigger but anyway, we're going to have a go. I've had to wear oversized gloves because I can't get a normal sized gloves on and I don't know how the heck I'm going to growl it because I can't grip my knife. But anyway, not whinging, uh, be careful about blackthorn. Anyway, as I said, we're up at we're up at Kinaid again now. We've got some clients coming in a couple of days' time, so we're going to try and get out quite early on the hind cull. It's a lovely day up here, actually. So we're going to try and get up on the hill. Um, wind's kind of coming quite nicely, so we're going to go around up a gully. We'll take the bike out initially and see what we can see. Graham's had a training course on the camera, so it'll be a lot better this time. So he tells me. We shall wait and see. Okay, like, a bit like a flaming one-handed paper hanger, but anyway, we'll see what happens. <whistles> Fairly early on the hinds, up with Graham. Um, quite interesting on this one because you'll see what we're talking about, about needing to wear good quality clothing on the hill, because we start off in lovely conditions. I think we probably nearly had almost four seasons in, in, in what, two, three, four hours of filming. So it's really quite interesting and it definitely demonstrates the benefit of really, really good kit. trying to get into which are just round the corner fairly easy stalk just onto that next ridge and then we've got a shot but there's also a group of hinds led in the heather right on the skyline up above us the red spear reds in a really good position which is kind of snooking me because I just don't see how we can just get past them. everything's perfect Sun's perfect sun's gone down but now we've got a group up here that are uh, That's going to be tricky. It's about 180 yards, uh, fairly easy shot. Young stag, a couple of hinds, there's a few more on the back of the hill. They initially looked as if they might just work off the sky. I mean, clearly there was no safe shot. But just looked as if they might just drop down. I was hoping he'd come down the ridge, just give us a bit of a backstop, but clearly they've got other ideas. We're trying to get around the wind, it's kind of coming around the hill. There's quite a lot of reds out there. So we're in the process of working around to see if we can get into them, but We've got to be mindful that on the way, there's probably other deer just rested, it's a bit sheltered in here, so we might encounter others, so you've got to be a little bit careful on the way around, but a little bit unlucky there that we, uh, we didn't get the chance, but anyway, we'll press on.
Gee, I get you, I get you. See the hinds just disappearing off the top of the ridge. We're probably I was gonna take a second hind out of there actually. There was a hind, a couple of calves and a, a yearling hind, but the one in front was an old, it flew lead down, an old hind, no calf, so I'll take the old hind first. It's actually quite a tricky shot. That's blustery as anything here, it was actually 245 yards. Um, but, but I did give it a, a smidgen, a smidgen right and a smidgen high because the wind's whipping down this valley. But I mean, you could see that's, that's bang on the money. You saw the, the leg just go, it indicates a, a heart lung shot. Um, we had to wait quite a while for it to turn on. Ordinarily, we'd have probably got another one out of that group, but <clears throat> they, they kind of went back a little bit and then up, and you start to get towards the ridge. You know, you, 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 all right, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't unsafe, but it's just, it's just not worth chancing. And, and they were starting to push out, you know, 280, 300 yards. And <clears throat> comes a time when you start to increase the risk in the shot, so it's just not worth taking it. We've got a deer on the deck, it's dead. We don't want to sort of try and do something that's pushing it a little bit and then wound a deer. So I'll let everything settle down now and we'll uh, we'll go across. Show me. Where is it? Where is it? Show me. Show me. Show me. Good girl. Good girl. Good lass. Good lass. Okay, dead, dead. Good girl. That just shows you, Graham and I had marked it about 70, 80 yards that way. So we'd have been looking over there, would have found it, but again, it's amazing how you get disorientated just in, in Heather, you've got no point of reference. So we're in the area, but we weren't walking straight to it. It's just handy. I've been mad at me. Yeah, good old hind. Good one to take. Yeah, it's a quick look, obviously good nick. Oh, lumps, lumps. No brakes. It's big hind, big old hind. No calf. Yeah, quite a bit of teeth wear on there. Yeah, good old girl. She's had a good innings. Traditionally on the hill we would do a hill growlock, field growlock, whatever you want to call it, and basically that would involve Bleeding the animal, opening the, the throat, not in the esophagus, the food pipe, and then basically pulling it through. A small bit body incision uh, to pull essentially the growlock out, so the intestines and the stomach, and then the tube intact, and then you tie off the, the anus and pull that forward. So basically all of this area will be intact, and so would all of this area. That's, that's obviously to when you're involved in a long drag you're not getting contamination within the carcass. Here on most of this estate, I can get the bike. So we do a full growlick on the hill. It's a lot more convenient, it's cleaner. The deer starts cooling sooner. So we essentially we take everything, everything out. So what we've done here is we've basically opened up the uh, bled, opened up the, the, the stomach area. I've opened up the chest cavity so I can take all the diaphragm, heart, lungs, throat all out. I've opened up the pelvic area with the bone saw so basically I can take the anus all forward, so essentially everything from this deer will roll this way, actually using gravity, but everything will come out. The only thing kind of holding that in now is the diaphragm skirt and then the connect connective tissue around the back on the uh, where the fillets are. So essentially we'll roll the whole lot out, that's really clean. Um, and while we're going back to get the bike, I suppose the temperature is a bit milder today, it's probably about 5 or 6 degrees. That's just here, that's cooling. Um, and we're straight on the bike, straight back to the chiller, straight in the larder. So that's a really clean carcass. But if you weren't having to drag, clearly you couldn't do a growlock to this extent. Part of your examination for level two, spleen, plum coloured, no discoloration. That would be an anthrax indicator. Never been known in UK deer, but I mean, obviously about twice the size of the liver. Um, kind of a plummy colour, that sort of shape. That's in good order. There's obviously nothing unhealthy whatsoever with this carcass. There's your mesenteric lymph node chain, covered in fat really. No swelling, no gritty, no pussiness. You want the smooth side of the intestine. Often they, 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 they're more pronounced, but there's a lot of fat on this animal. What you don't want to be looking on is the Cumberland sausage side. So you've got a Cumberland sausage side, which is the lumpy side. It's the smooth side you want. So you flip it over and they're in, normally in an unbroken ring, sometimes like little nodules, but they're all healthy. 
liver, good order. Very clean, beautiful, no, mo no marbling and mottling, that might be an indication of liver fluke. Gastric lymph nodes, I mean, you've got a healthy deal. We always split the stomach bag on the hill, we'll leave that for the carrion. Lungs, you're looking for lungworm. Um, again, it would be hardening around the edges and, and sort of cysts, blotchiness, but good healthy deer. Everything about that is spot on. People struggle with the head, I'll do it again. A couple of ways you can attack it. You can come from underneath or you can come from the top. You want to be in the, in the bottom edge of the jaw. But if you hold the ears and cut close up, this is where a really sharp knife comes in, close up to the back of the ears, that actually puts you onto the, onto the atlas joint. And it can, my knife's just kind of going into the atlas joint there. And that puts you right onto the flanged bone. And you can just sort of tease that with your knife. You can see that there. And tease through that socket there. That fits into there. So just basically tease it so you can see the other one now opening up. Not a lot of pressure. Just, just tease it with the edge of your knife. And I'm actually through it almost now. So open that flange up. And I'm through. So I'll take that back down now. That's where I've taken the windpipe out. I'll take that all off. I don't want that back in the larder. And basically that's off. So you can see here these two bones stuck into a cup. Trying to cut it like that won't work. Trying to cut anywhere down the vertebrae won't work. You have to use a saw. But with a knife you can just tease in here and ease that back and then take the head off. Okay, the weather's really blowing in on us now. Graham's having a real job holding the camera. There's some nasty uh, water blowing in, but we, we we got into a little group of hinds here, tucked in this in, on this ridge out of the rain. Just got in and uh, going to take the shot on the hind on the left. Just got a nice neck shot on it. it actually, was shootable, um, but the calf appeared. So I was going to take the calf, but then the hind walked right in front of the calf just before it disappeared off the ridge line. So it obviously wasn't meant to be. Um, so I think we're going to get back now and uh, it's really blowing in hard. We'll pick the bike up and go and get these uh, the, the deer we've shot in. Chris there, finally managing to complete the extraction and now the shooting show news. This is the Shooting Show News. The Clay Shooting Classic will take place this year at Austin Shooting Ground in the last week of May. One of the biggest and most loved independent events in the competition calendar, the Classic will once again be a 150 bird sporting, with a 100 bird sport trap taking place at the same time. Austin will be using all of their ground for the shoot, including some rarely shot areas, so expect a unique and challenging target presentation. Other popular features, such as the Services Classic, will be returning this year. We'll see you at the Classic on the 27th to the 31st of May. The Nottinghamshire Ground will host the full series of clay shooting magazine events this year, with the British Schools and Young Shots Championships also taking place there on the 25th of April. Mark the dates in your diary now. Shooters are having more trouble than ever with the firearms licensing procedure. That's the evidence from Basque's firearms team, who say the number of inquiries they received topped 10,000 last year. The most common issue was police forces taking the law into their own hands and getting applicants to do or pay extra, such as demanding independent medical verification. Bast's Bill Harriman said that with continuing issues surrounding medical verification and the peak renewal period in the five-year cycle starting this year, 2020 is set to be just as busy for the firearms team. And finally, there's now just a month to go into the British Shooting Show. The biggest retail and trade event on the UK shooting circuit returns to the NEC on the 14th to the 16th of February. And once again a huge number of manufacturers, suppliers and retailers will be there, covering every corner of the shooting market. There will also be arena demos, historic arms displays, a night vision tunnel, the announcement of the Great British Shooting Awards winners and more. Get your tickets now at shootingshow.co.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>